Hey everybody, it's Mike Drudge coming to you from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth, Texas. If you're looking for an affordable Class C motorhome that's a quality product and it'll sleep the whole family, you don't need to look any farther than a Greyhawk like I have sitting behind me here. This is a 31F model that has bunk beds in it, so you don't have to convert a dinette or a sofa into a bed for the kiddos. You've already got bunk beds. Plus, of course, we have an overhead bed up on top. Lots of neat stuff to show off on this, but before I get started on the inside fun stuff, let's look at the outside fun stuff. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about Jayco's, if you do any research at all, you'll find out that this is a one-piece fiberglass front cap. Also on these Greyhawks, they're one piece fiberglass roof. That's fantastic. It's not a TPO rubberized material. It's one piece fiberglass, which is usually reserved for the very high end coaches that you see in the industry. Also, we have fiberglass down here, nice flared running boards, makes it a nice clean look. Uh, on the outside, we have cameras right here in our mirrors, and there's also a camera in the back. So that eliminates all blind spots, and really, that's a, a safety bonus for you going down the road. Love those side cameras. Personally, when I'm driving, I hit the right turn signal. The first thing I look at is the camera view. The second thing I look at is this fisheye mirror, as I call it. And the third thing I look at is the regular mirror. Once I check all those three locations and it's clear, I know I'm safe to move in to the lane next to me. Um, so coming around on this side, you can see that we've got frameless windows, which gives it a really nice, clean, aerodynamic look. And you'll notice uh, right here, J-Ride Plus. Well, what exactly does that J-Ride Plus mean? That means this unit has a computer balanced drive shaft. It's got Coney shocks, heavy duty rear stabilizing bar, front stabilizing bar, Hellwood helper springs, and even rubber isolation mounts. All of those components together work together to give you a better ride. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, none of these Class C units that are on an e, <clears throat> excuse me, an E450 chassis like this ride like a diesel pusher. But by Jayco doing this J-Ride Plus, it's gonna maximize the handling and the way that it rides compared to all of their competitors. Now again, we're in a 31F, this is 32 and a half feet long. It's a little over, uh, uh, 11 feet 6 inches tall including the AC units so it's not a huge unit if you're looking to go out and enjoy state parks and national parks this is well within the acceptable range to accommodate uh, for most campgrounds and so on so we're on the fun side of the unit as I like to say I've got lots of nice covered awning space on this side once we pop that awning out Storage is always precious on, on any RV and especially smaller class C's. Now on the Greyhawks, you notice we have slam latch baggage doors. Obviously we don't have storage here. This is our propane compartment. I can look in here and see our propane fill level, but they're all nice, heavy duty, lockable slam latch compartments. And then inside we have rotocast uh, storage compartments. Pop this one open so you can see that. These are the ones that are going to get all the activity because these are on the patio side. These are where the candles and the, the fire starter and all the stuff that you access all the time are going to be on this side. Got another little compartment here. Notion, notice that the motion lights pop right on as soon as I put my arms in there. So if you got your arms full of stuff and you usually do when you're out camping after dark, that light's going to pop on for you. A nice big storage area over here, uh, which goes through uh, on the other side. Now this is on the underside of the bed, so we can lift that up and access this space from inside as well as out here. Now moving around to the back, this is pretty special. Look how heavy duty this is. This is a 7,500 pound rated hitch. So you can in fact pull a decent sized car behind here. I have my six way plug right here as well. If you're not pulling a car, 
put a luggage rack, bike rack, or that kind of thing. You know, a lot of people ask, well, I'm going to buy a motorhome because I don't want to pull anything behind me like a trailer. Odds are you're going to be pulling something. If you have a motorhome, you're going to be pulling your dinghy vehicle back here, or your toad, as we like to call it. And this is well equipped to be able to do that. Uh, can't really see it. It's really small, but that's your camera right there under that uh, horizontal red light. So you have camera back here. Of course, LED lights everywhere. I'll pop this guy open right here. This is your utility connection bay. Some may call it the wet bay. Nicely labeled. I do have a light in here. Water pump switch, which I can also control from inside. I have a hot and cold outdoor shower right here. And then uh, this takes the guesswork out of how to hook this up. So depending on if you're city water fill or sanitizing the tank, just control these just the way it has it outlined there. And we've got our, uh, everything's nice and clean. And also this is a rotocast material too. So easy to keep clean. Gray and black holding tanks, obviously gray is your shower water, sink water, black is toilet water. They terminate into one location there. And more rotocast storage here. And here's your main power cord. Uh, so you can tuck your power cord in here. There is household current there and your cable if you have cable TV at your campsite and off, often you will. You can hook it up right there. This is not detachable. You can just shove your power cord in there like we have it. Another Rotocast storage compartment. And then finally, we do have a generator on here. It's a 4000 Onan generator that runs off of gasoline. Plenty of big enough to keep all the appliances and lights and everything happy on the inside of this unit. Coming around on this side, you can see we have slide toppers on top. So that's a signature of the Greyhawk. Nice to have slide toppers to keep the debris off of the top of those slides. So with all that, let's go inside and have a look on the inside of this Bunkhouse 31F Greyhawk. Okay, now we're on the inside of this 31F Greyhawk. And again, a special feature of this is that we have bunk beds in this floor plan. Another thing that I love about it is we have a dinette across from a sofa. If you're buying a unit like this with bunk beds, chances are you got kids or at least guests, so you're gonna be sitting in multiple locations. Having a dinette across from a sofa really makes it a lot nicer for visiting. You're not like all in a line with a dinette and a sofa, kind of looking at each other this way. It's, uh, it makes for a nice cozy kind of feeling. Now this has got a big, uh, what you might call super slide. I didn't point it out outside, but the slide starts from behind that dinette or in front of it really all the way back to the very end of the coach. So this really is, once that slide is out, it really opens up the inside of this unit. Now we're in modern farmhouse decor here, which is a real popular decor option that Jayco has been offering. So what I'm gonna do is start off up here in the cockpit and kind of work my way back. Again, we have a bunk bed up here. So um, one thing I love is this is hinged, so it makes it easy to get down into the cockpit. Just pop this down and now we have our bunk bed up here. This is neat. There's a shade that's powered up there that I can open up to let natural light in. Or if the kiddos are sleeping up there, open that up and let them watch the star shower outside. That's really neat, real easy to do, and it's switched right here. There's cup holders up there. There's household current and USB uh, charging ports up here as well. Nice LED lights. But again, I'm gonna pop this, well, before I leave this, there is uh, some netting here that pops into these seat belt latch looking things, comes down, keeps kids from rolling out of bed during the night. And there's also a ladder that pops in here, which I'll show you back in the closet. So with that, I'm gonna pop this out of the way. So see, I can get down here and not crack my noggin. And it makes it a lot easier for getting in and out of these seats. So, Traditional uh, E450 cockpit in here. We have our Sony infotainment center here, which has got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on it. 
Um, again, we've got our rear camera. We've got Sirius XM on here. So if you're a subscriber, you can light this radio up and have Sirius XM going down the road. And of course, control your phone and everything from that. Uh, let me pop this over one more. And you can see we have our rear camera view here as well pretty nice turn this off so it's quieter everything else is pretty traditional and what you would expect to see a unit like this have a cruise control up here on the steering wheel our power and heated mirrors up here so pop this to the left or right and I can control my rear view mirrors now these seats do rotate around I'm not gonna do it right now but trust me they do these things will turn around and you'll notice that they're lower than the floor level. So you get a booster seat. Pop these things in here. So once we turn these around, you can actually sit on these at more of a comfortable height. Now this is pretty nice with Jayco Greyhawks, with Jayco Class C's. It's flat from here all the way to the back. You're not stepping up into the bedroom in the back. It's a flat floor front to back. Another nice thing that Jayco does, safety-minded, is there's seat belts in every seating location. So you don't have to choose which ones of your kids or grandkids don't get a seat belt. Everybody gets a seat belt. Of course, they're up here. But we have seat belts here in the dinette as well as it will every seating location. And every Jayco motorized is going to have a seat belt. Now, uh, roller shades everywhere, so these are nice. These aren't the cheap uh, pleated shades. These are soft clothes roller shades. And what I like about this too, if you do want to convert this into a bed, super easy to do. There's no, notice there's no poles under here to knock your knees. This is all open. So just lift up on this, and then this thing just drops down and becomes your surface for your bed. Of course, take these cushions out, spread them out, and now we have a bed here. When it's time to pop it back up, just hit that at an angle and lock those teeth in place. That's real easy to do. Now there is storage under here, and I wanna show you as I remove these cushions, check out how thick this is. Check that out. I mean, it's gotta be an inch thick plywood, so, and, and a piano hinge, so really stout. I have storage under there that I can access. But again, here are those seat belts on all seating locations. So, very nice, pop that back. Um, this is a jackknife sofa, so lift up the front and this will simply drop down like that. So I have another bed if you're really wanting to sleep a bunch of folks. So I'm thinking, uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight to 10 folks can sleep comfortably in here. Storage above here, we have struts on these cabinet doors to hold them open. Uh, again, solid maple doors, not particle board with tape on them. Household current plug right there, a light switch here and another household current plug there. Now we're moving into the galley area. This is nice. I really like that they added this undermount lighting under the cabinets or countertop, I should say. Really classy. Um, add a little, a little more prep space here by this. Uh, teak wood cutting board and a strainer here with a high rise gooseneck matte black faucet. Back here is our little tower of power. Now I have USB-C, regular USB and household current. If you pop this down like so, you can put your phone and if your phone does wireless charging, it will charge wirelessly. So you can see my phone is starting to charge right there. They're in the back uh, beside the beds too, but that's real handy. Uh, a usable kitchen space. So we have a three burner cooktop. Uh, easy to remove these grates for cleaning. Small oven, big enough for pizzas and pot pies and so on. And a little bit of storage under there. And a little bit of storage under here. Probably a good place for the trash can to go. Nice big microwave up here. Uh, very nice size microwave. And yet more storage there and more storage in here. Very nice. Turning around on this side, I have a 10 cubic foot 
uh, eight cubic foot refrigerator. This is a gas electric refrigerator. It's running on propane when you don't have access to shore power. As long as you have it uh, on automatic, it'll switch to electric when you do have electric available. Of course, our freezer compartment up there. Now next to that, nice pantry storage. A great place to hold your camera bag right there in the middle. And a little cubby down below. Now I'm going to do si -do with you here, Brian, and show you. It's kind of our control center right here. We have our inverter control right here. So there are inverted outlets in this coach. Uh, our power control system right away, we can see we're on 30 amp service. This is a 30 amp coach, but it has an energy management system. I have two AC units on this. And even though we have 30 amp uh, uh, power, I can have two AC units because it manages the power. Traditional uh, thermostat here for, of course, your air conditioner and your furnace and so on. Got light switches below that. Now, moving to the back of the coach, here's our bunk beds. If you want to put a television in here, you can. There's coax cable and power up there. Same way on the bottom. Um, have a, have a, uh, uh, a mount right there for TV. And then little drawers under here as well. Here's a little quick tip. That's pretty sharp right there. And this is pretty sharp right there. Personal experience, I think I still have a scar on my forehead from a previous motorhome cracking my noggin on that and or this. Take some of that pipe insulation you get at big box stores for pipes when it gets cold in the winter. They have a slit down one side of them. Pop them right on there when you get to your campsite. I promise you, you'll be glad you did because you hit that. It doesn't hurt at all and it doesn't look bad because it's about the same color as this. So a little quick tip in the middle of our tour here. And then you have little curtains here for privacy, of course, as well. Now moving back into the bedroom space, I'm gonna switch over here because we can actually access the bathroom from the hallway there as well as from the bedroom here. So either way, we have access to the bathroom. Nice little bedroom area here. There's a lot of storage in this for, again, just a 32 and a half foot motorhome. Here's our, what you might call our main closet space. Here's the ladder that goes on the front bunk area up there and it's a telescoping ladder. It's got a little bracket there to hold it in place. Real handy because it doesn't take up much room um, and it's nice and sturdy for the bunk area. Inside this are the uh, shades for the front windshield and the side windows. There's actually a curtain, which I failed to show you, but I can in a second, that'll block off that cab area from the living area of the coach. So that's pretty neat. And then two really big full extension drawers under here, as well as over here. So one, two, three, four, a lot of drawer space up here. Got our Insignia branded television here. And then turning around here, looking at the bed. Notice there's two wireless charging pads on either side of the nightstand. Wireless charging on either side of the bunk, real handy for laying your phone there while you're sleeping and charging. You don't have to fumble around with cords at night. There are plugs on either side of the bed too. So if you have a CPAP machine or otherwise need household current, you'll have it. Additional storage overhead, which is real nice. Also notice it's all open up here. It's not compartmentalized, so you can put big items, longer items up in there. Uh, makes the storage more flexible. Now, if I lift up this bed, you can see that there is lots of storage under here. Remember when we looked from outside? That's that door that I opened up. So this is sharing that space and I can prop this open right here as well. Let's take a look at the bathroom here. Open up this door. So light switch right inside have a nice glass shower enclosure here and a one piece molded shower surround. Now, this is neat in 2023, Jayco's giving you a nice big shower head, which is great and really tall. I'm six feet tall. I could be a lot taller and still have plenty of room with this skylight. So tall folks will still find it to be very comfortable in here. Uh, not a huge bathroom, but as I say, big enough, <laughs> okay? 
So I have a, a plastic foot flush toilet here, traditional foot flush toilet, and then over here, a really nice medicine cabinet. I'm wishing they would have put a couple more shelves in there. If this is my motorhome, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put another shelf there and maybe one there just to utilize this, but I'm glad there is a huge medicine cabinet available here. And a little more storage underneath here. And as well as over the commode, I have one up here. And as we say, it has a nice fart fan up top. Now, moving back around, what did I forget? I forgot to show you the curtain in the front cab. So, say you're parked somewhere, uh, gonna drop this down and sleep for the night. And also, maybe it's really cold outside and you don't wanna try to heat that area up there. Notice this has hook and loop fabric on. So just start it over here on these little grommet looking things. Pop that on there, right there, and then just pull it across like so. So now I've blocked this off and again, I'm not heating or cooling all the cab area up there necessarily. If you're gonna be spudded in for an extended period of time, you can put those windshield and side window covers on up there. So, hey, what do you think? Uh, again, like I always like to say, uh, your vote is more important than mine. I didn't point out this little cubby up here and our controls right inside the coach are right up here for checking tank levels and so on our slide and then our generator power switch is right up here as well. It's got tank heaters so you can camp in this unit in the cold. There's so many neat features in this, it's easy to overlook some of them. So again, we're in the 31F bunkhouse model Greyhawk motorhome. Lots of features on this, bunk beds, it really feels homey in here. Everybody's comfortable, everybody's got a nice place to sleep, and yet it's not a huge motorhome. But let me know what you think. Your vote's more important than mine. Leave a comment below. While you're down there, go ahead and click like and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know when we post similar videos like this. If you have other questions, drop them in there. We'll do our best to get to them. I always appreciate you watching, really do. And I hope you'll join us the next time. See you then. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or any suggestions on content you'd like to see, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again from Bot RV.